Fuji fans, we need to have a little talk. I spent more than a month with the Fujifilm X-T5 and in this video I'm going to make some Fuji fans very angry and I'm going to make some of them very happy. Which one are you? You'll know by the end of the video and you'll also know if this is the camera that you should upgrade to or if you should stick with what you already have or maybe even jump ship. Okay, let's give it a try. Oh Fuji, you're like the Star Wars sequel of cameras. Every time there's a new release, people are so full of excitement. But then in a lot of ways, they don't live up to the hype. They use designs from things in the past, or they have some very weird choices, like when Rey and Kylo Ren kissed. Back to the camera. Using the Fujifilm X-T5 is such a mix of emotions for me. On one hand, I love it. On the other hand, it's a very frustrating camera. The Fuji X-T5 looks good, and more importantly, it feels good to use. It's a fun, creative camera. Even better, the X-T5 is much smaller than the X-T4. But on the other hand, the X-T5 autofocus is subpar compared to any other system out there. My 12-year-old son is an aspiring wildlife photographer, and we went on a photo safari to Botswana this year. His images are fantastic, and his hit rate was well above 70%. I had him shoot for a while at the Bronx Zoo, and after a few minutes he said, I guess I got used to how good the autofocus on the camera we took to Africa was, and then he stopped shooting the Fuji. The camera that he took to Africa was the Sony a7C, which uses the same focus system as the a7 III, which is a camera that was released in 2018. The eye detect autofocus is much better than it has been, which improves the shooting experience for most of the typical uses of the X-T5, but it's still not as good as it should be. For humans, the autofocus would detect the eye for the majority of a series of shots, but not really in all of them. Every other system has had good autofocus for years. Now most of the companies are up to spectacular autofocus. Many of the camera's features are actually something I have the biggest problem with. For example, the manual dials are big and they look good, but they get moved very easily and I never remember to lock them before I put them in my camera bag. Every single time I took the camera out of my bag, one or more of the dials had turned and I had to spend some time figuring out which one it was while I missed the shot. The X-T5 also has a control switch to go from photo to video mode, and this was often changed too, so I'd go to take a shot and I'd start recording a video. This alone was so frustrating it would be enough to make me not buy this camera. But Fuji's really known for its street style photography, and the film simulations in the camera are great. In the hands of a great street photographer, the Fuji system is hard to beat. I'm not a great street photographer, but my friend Hugh Brownstone of the channel Three Blind Men and an Elephant is an amazing street photographer. He said I could share his montage of images from his own review video, which is incredibly nice of him. Here's the URL to his channel, and I'll put it in the description as well. over to Lightroom and take a look at some of these image samples and some of the autofocus tests. The first bunch of images we're going to look at were shot at the Fuji X-T5 event in New York City. I shot this image because it's a sort of typical still life with person in the background. So if you take a look at the white books in the center, you'll see that they have overexposed completely. However, all the details in the planter look really nice. And take a look, we can see even shooting through the glass, there's a remarkable amount of detail for a still life. Here's another tilt shift that I did on the launch day. If I zoom in here to take a look at the bricks, you can see that there's a lot of nice detail. For an APS-C size sensor, it is a remarkable amount of detail. Here I switched over to the Fuji Mac macro lens. This is just a shot of how much detail you can get out of this camera system. This is a printed sign on a signpost and you can see all the perforations of the material that this sign is printed on. I like to take pictures of latte art as a good test of a camera and a lens's resolution because there's a lot of detail on a good piece of latte art. You can see the individual bubbles here. You can even see the light reflecting off of the individual bubbles. This is a nice amount of resolution. Next couple of images are just so we can see the dynamic range here. Here's an image in the shadows and then here I brought it up a couple of stops. Another street style image and here I brought the shadows up. Here I exposed everything so the shadows would fall almost completely to dark. However, that's how much detail is actually in this photo. 
Let's get into the human eye autofocus. Usually if a camera is going to have a problem with eye detect autofocus, it's going to be when one eye is in the shadow and one is in the sun, but you can see that the eye detect really nailed it on this one. Here's my son in a donut shop and his eyes should really be in focus here with the eye detect autofocus. Instead, what's in focus is the donut edge. You can see that the crumbs here are sharp. It really should have nailed this image, which it did in the very next shot, even though he hasn't changed at all. So first shot, this shot is slightly out of focus on the eyes. This shot is also slightly out of focus on the eyes. This shot is really out of focus on the eyes. And then back to being in focus again. And then back to being out of focus. This is the problem that I had with eye detect autofocus the entire time I was working with the camera. This is a lousy picture, but it's in here to show the problem I have with the dials. I took the camera out of the bag. I didn't realize that the dials had changed. So here's a picture where the focus switch on the front had been switched to manual and I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it there. Couldn't figure out why the croissant wasn't in focus. Stuck my hand in front of it to try and get it to focus and realize it was on manual focus. This should not happen. It should not be this easy to turn a camera into manual focus mode just from putting it in a camera bag. Let's take a look at the autofocus for animals and birds. Here we have a subject that's probably the easiest thing in the world to focus on. It is a cat laying completely still. You'll notice that the nose is in focus here and not the eyes. Again, one of the problems is that the focus is so hit and miss. Here's a squirrel where the eyes are clearly in focus. This shot here, the squirrel's eyes are mostly in focus, although a lot of the focal point is right here on the fur, but that's kind of understandable, but the eye is nice and it's got some reflection in it as well. So good job, Fuji, on that. Here there's a little bit of motion blur on the squirrel, but the main problem is that the focus has jumped over to here. This was a focal point before the squirrel came into the scene. It was seeing the horizontal line over here. Next, we headed to the zoo to do some eye detect autofocus tests. And once again, I took the camera out of the bag and it was switched to manual focus modes. Here we're gonna see the camera have a weird hit and miss rate. The eyes are in focus on this lemur over here. I would have expected the camera to jump to this lemur, but whatever, one lemur is better than no lemurs, right? This shot though, neither of the lemur's eyes are in focus, although what's mostly in focus here again is the nose, but clearly no eyeballs in focus on this one. Same on this one, no eyes in focus. Same on this one, no eyes in focus. No eyes in focus. Suddenly the eyes are in focus. This lemur moved almost imperceptibly from here to here, and yet somehow this it couldn't find the eyes, and this it could. This sequence of the lemurs was shot right next to the other ones, but this was with a Sony a7R5. The Sony a7R5 has eye detect autofocus for animals, but this is where the competition is right now. The front lemur is in focus, the back lemur is in focus, in focus again, in focus again. These are all sequences, five, six shots in a row. His eye is still in focus, another shot in focus. The Fuji wasn't able to come anywhere close to this. But then we get to this cute animal, and I forget its name. If you know the name of this animal, please let me know in the comments below. And this one, it just absolutely, on the first shot, nailed the eyes. I mean, that is what eye detect autofocus is supposed to look like. Second shot, nailed the eyes. This shot would be fast enough to capture the eyes, but as it starts to move, it loses focus on the eye. This is the focal point right here. The camera has snapped to the area sort of where the head had been, but it's lost eye detect autofocus. And it does have claw detect autofocus at this point. The focus on seals and sea lions is always weird because they have this sheen of water that sticks to their fur. That said, it did mostly nail the eye on this. This is all motion blur. The seal came out of the water very quickly, but it did find a closed eye on the seal. Nice job, Fuji. If you like this, subscribe. Ah! Looking at this American bald eagle, we see some of the problems I have with both Fuji X-T5's autofocus and APS-C in general. So it did a pretty good job on finding the eyes here, although notice that the nostrils are actually in focus right here. Same thing, nostril is in focus over here. Finally, we get to some focus where the eyeball is the main focal point. Here it jumps right back again to the nostril. Same thing, jumps back to the nostril again. Ah, now it becomes a bear. To compare, this is a Sony a7R5. Now this is a much more expensive camera, I understand that. This one though, it nailed the focus even from the side. This had nailed the focus on the eye even though it was creepily blinking. Here it finds the eyeball when there's almost no eyeball at all. Back to finding the eyeball, back to eyeball. Here it does the same thing, it jumps to the nostril. There's something about this shape that the camera's like. But again, right back to the eye. Animal detect autofocus systems have been doing pretty well with the eyes and noses on dogs. It jumped right to the eyeballs on the bear. These wild dogs were a problem for both the Fuji and the Sony camera. It's this very first shot, the eyeball is clearly not in focus. Here we do have the eyeball in focus. Here we clearly have the eyeball in focus. This one though, it's kind of lost the focus on the eye. Once again, it's going back to the nose. This shot had totally lost the eye, but check this out. I happened to get almost the exact same shot from the Sony and this one couldn't get the eyeball either. I'm pretty sure that this problem here was the whisker coming down over its eye, whereas these whiskers over here had nothing behind them. And so both cameras jumped onto that autofocus. Kind of weird, right? 
Fuji made it clear that this camera was designed for people that are primarily photographers, not video shooters. But that said, it's a killer video camera. I shot 6K footage with the X-T5, which is particularly impressive for a teeny camera of this size. I'm shooting this video on the X-T5 right now. The eye detect on this is following me around. Now, the reason I turned over there to see if the eye detect was following me is because this camera doesn't have a flip around screen, which makes it really annoying if you're trying to take some video of yourself. There are also multiple indicators on the back of the camera to show if it's recording, but there are none on the front. That means that when you're doing video of yourself, not only can you not tell if you're in focus, you can't tell if you're recording either. On the plus side, I am really impressed with the range of video formats in the X-T5. For a photographer-oriented camera, this has an astounding range of video modes. If you're mostly a photographer looking to get the best image quality possible from the small size of the APS-C form factor, this is your camera. There is really no reason not to buy it. If you're a hybrid shooter, it is a great video camera, although it's much more limited than the X-H2 and the X-H2S. If you're primarily video, those are the cameras that you should go buy. If you'd like to see me do some reviews of some of the new Fuji lenses, let me know in the comments which ones you're particularly interested in seeing. If you like this video, please subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and get shared. And over here is my original first impression video of the X-T5. For Dave Tries This, I'm David Schloss. Thanks so much for giving this a try.